So this video is about triangulation and qualitative research and specifically I want to address three common myths about triangulation. So let's get straight to it. So the most common myth about triangulation is that you need three methods. It kind of makes sense because the name triangulation uh, makes us think of a triangle. That's one reason. Another reason is that is the way uh, is where uh, the method originated, where the concept and the method originated and it originated in methods uh, of uh, surveying the land. So taking measurements with your compass where you would need uh, three different locations to basically pinpoint the location in the middle. Uh, this is why, like I said, I think this, uh, this origin of triangulation is to blame for at least two of the myths that I want to discuss today. But like I said, you don't actually, in research at least, uh, having triangulation does not mean you need to have three methods. It simply means having more than one method. So you can have two methods, you can have five or six methods. So it's okay not to have three methods. Um, it's okay not to have triangulation in the first place, not to have it at all. And nowadays there seems to be a lot of pressure, especially on students, uh, to use triangulation in their study. However, there are plenty of studies that have successfully used only one method in their, in their investigation. So it's definitely more about the quality uh, than about the quantity when it comes to research. So remember, you can have a study with even one single method. The second myth, and again, I believe this has to do at least partially with uh, where triangulation originated, is that triangulation, the purpose, the sole purpose of triangulation is to validate what your participants are saying. So basically, the idea here is that uh, I'm gathering the data from the participant, for example, from an individual interview, and then I have these other ways to collect the data from this participant, for example, through reflective uh, journals and uh, a focus group discussion where this participant also is present, which means that uh, by uh, gathering data from all these different sources, gathering data about this participant, I'm validating what she or he had to say. So I'm checking whether they, they are telling the truth, basically whether what they told me in the interview uh, overlaps with, with what they said in these other uh, data sets. However, this is not true. Whilst it is possible to do what I just described, so some people may decide to, uh, to conduct their study in that way, there are other ways in which triangulation can be used and in fact usually is being used in completely different ways. So uh, although there are different purposes of triangulation, the most commonly known purpose, the most commonly cited and referred to purpose is to generally generate a comprehensive understanding of the phenomenon you are exploring. So this is not to validate what each person said. It is to validate essentially the findings of your study and I do have different videos about validity in research. So it is one of the methods to generally validate the findings, which means that you do have, for example, if we're talking about different sources of data, uh, you do have these different sources of data. You do have a comprehensive understanding and all these sources together uh, contribute to that understanding and to increasing validity of your claims. However, this is not to validate what each person has to say. This is not to check whether what they told you is true. So again, as I said, it's mainly to generate a comprehensive understanding and in-depth understanding of what you're exploring. And here, uh, Carvalho and White uh, also list four different reasons for uh, conducting uh, triangulation. Remember that it's just one of classifications, one of points of view, uh, so it's not that important to remember all these reasons, but this is what they say. So uh, one of these reasons is enriching, which means the outputs of different informal and formal instruments add value to each other by explaining different aspects of an issue. So it's basically enriching our knowledge. This is what I said, this is the most common reason why we use triangulation. Another one, according to these authors, is refuting. So where one set of options disproves a hypothesis generated by another set of options. It's kind of like what I described about validating. It's not a very common way to use, it's not a very common reason to use triangulation, however. Another one very similar is confirming. So where you want to confirm a hypothesis generated by another set of options. And finally, explaining where one set of options sheds light on unexpected finding derived from another set of options. So it's almost uh, something that uh, resembles, for example, mixed methods research where you have your uh, survey responses and then you want to further explore 
the reasons why people said something so you have your qualitative phase following the quantitative phase so explain some of these findings before we continue i just wanted to remind you that if you want to have a personal session with me i do offer a variety of zoom tutorials on a variety of topics in addition to all kinds of other services that help you plan and develop and implement your study as well as analyze your data so if at any point of developing or conducting your study you feel like you're stuck or you need support feel free to explore my website and then reach out through that through the provided email and now myth number three about triangulation uh, kind of leading from the previous one where i kept talking about, about the methods in fact i feel like throughout the whole video i contributed to reinforcing that myth because i mainly focus on data collection methods and types of data and myth number three is that triangulation only has to do with data collection methods in practice however there are different types of triangulation again this depends on which classification you follow which authors uh, you read but generally there are different types of triangulation and people list for example a theoretical uh, triangulation which basically means uh, that your study may be based on different theoretical perspectives or different uh, theoretical frameworks then there may be an investigator triangulation which means having different investigators usually at the stage of uh, data analysis so basically doing intercoder reliability where different people analyze the data so you're triangulating what they found and then there is data triangulation so using data from different people uh, collected at different times so generally having a variety of data sets and then methodological triangulation which refers to our different methods of data collection there are some uh, uh, some overlaps between these so i just use one of the classifications in which for example it's not entirely clear uh, about uh, methodological triangulation whether it is just about methods of data collection or maybe is it about different research designs such as for example quantitative and qualitative research uh, which also is a form of triangulation so remember if you if you have a mixed method study you're also uh, using triangulation in your study then according to that classification data triangulation uh, is about data collected from different like i said spa different spaces times from different people however in practice this also usually means different data collection methods because if you're gathering different types of data very often you have to use different data collection methods it doesn't the point is it doesn't really matter as long as you follow one classification you make it clear if you're going to use these terms just make it clear uh, who developed these terms and who you are following but just so you know triangulation is more than just about having uh, two or more data collection methods so this is it i hope that you learned something new i hope that i helped you understand triangulation a little bit better if i did please like the video to help others find it and i'll see you in the next video